in this lecture we see the capacitance in a pn junction so first let's see what is a simple capacitor so first let's see what is a simple capacitor we know that a capacitor stores electric charge in the form of electric field this charge storage this charge storage is done by two electrically conducting conduction plates those are separated by an insulating or a dielectric material so we know that in a simple capacitor charges can be stored between two conducting plates and between these two conducting plates there is an insulating or dielectric materials this is a simple parallel plate capacitor we know that these two conducting plates easily allows electric current through them while dielectric medium does not allow let me separate it let me separate this image first medium the electric medium does not allow electric current through it however it efficiently allows electric field
so when a voltage is applied to the capacitor charge carriers start flowing through these electrodes or conducting plates when these charge carriers reach to the electrodes of the capacitor they experience a strong opposition from the insulating material as a result as a result a large number of charge carriers are accumulated at the electrodes these charge carriers can not move between the electrodes or plates however they exert an electric field between the plates these charge carriers are stored near the 
dielectric material or near the boundary between the dielectric material and the electrodes. So this ability of a material to store electric charge is called capacitance it's a very simple phenomena as i think we all know that if there is a an insulating or dielectric material between two conducting plates then this device can act as a capacitor that can store electric charges so in a similar way in a similar way a pn junction can store electric charge or electric charges at the depletion region in pn junction here we can see it's a pn junction in this picture reverse bias is applied but this bias we can ignore this bias that here we can see that this capacitor here we can see there are p type material and there is n type materials and between these there is depletion region with no free charge carriers so here we can see that this p type and n type are acting as a conducting plates of a capacitor and this insulating material where there is no free charge carriers can act as an insulating material between these two conducting plates so in pn junction the p type and n type regions have high conductivity or high electric conductivity hence act like the electrodes or two conducting plates of the capacitor on the other hand the depletion region or layer whatever you want to say it has very high resistance hence 
text like the dielectric or insulating material of a capacitor so in short we can say that a pn junction can be considered as a parallel plate capacitor basically there are two basically there are two types of capacitance associated with pn junction first one is transition or junction capacitance that dominates under reverse bias conditions second one is diffusion capacitance that dominates under forward bias so there are two types of capacitance in pn junction first one is transition capacitance or junction capacitance or sometime we can call it as depletion capacitance and and this junction capacitance can dominate under a reverse bias condition and the second one is diffusion capacitance under forward bias condition so first let's see what is transition capacitance actually this transition capacitance is very easy to understand this is same as a parallel plate capacitor so it is very easy to understand or visualize from the charge distribution in the pn junction
here we are talking about transition capacitance so it means we are applying a reverse bias voltage so in transition capacitance the uncovered acceptors or acceptor atoms on the p side provides the negative charges or negative charge and the second the uncovered donor atoms on the n side provide the positive charge and the depletion region is acting as a dielectric medium so we know that capacitance can be written as so capacitance c can be written as charge q by applied voltage v so this is the general definition of a of the capacitance but or since in pn junction charge varies non linearly with the applied voltage therefore junction capacitance cj can be written as cj which is equal to dq by dv we can write here we are also because we are applying a reverse bias voltage but for simplicity i am only using v now we have to put the value of total charge q and applied voltage and after that we can get value of this junction capacitance and if we we know that charge q or dq can be written as so if i write dq which can be written as e and d x 
एक्स एन नॉट विच इज इक्वल टू ई एन ए एक्स पी नोट और टोटल चार्ज वी कैन राइट एज क्यू विच इज इक्वल टू ई ए ए द क्रोसेशनल एरिया ऑफ द डिप्लेसन रीजन एन डी एक्स एन नोट विच इज इक्वल टू ई ए एन ए दिस इज स्मॉल एन सॉरी एन ए एक्स पी नोट एन ए एक्स पी नोट नाउ वी हैव टू पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एक्स एन नोट एंड पी एन नोट सो we know that x p not which is equal to w that is the width of the depletion region nd by na plus nd this is in n type region or we don't need to write this and x n not which is equal to w एन ए एन ए प्लस एन डी एंड दिस एक्स एन नोट इज इन द पी टाइप रीजन एयर W is the depletion width. So by putting all these values, and we can write this C J, which is equal to D Q, and D V we can write as D V B I plus V R. We can finally write it as by putting the value of this D Q. let me write it dv dv we can finally write this cj as it's very simple equation so you can see in the book e epsilon s n a n d by 2 V B I plus V R. Here D V is the change in the voltage. So V B I plus V R into N A plus N D under the root. So this is the value for transition or junction capacitance. in reverse wise for a pn junction and by if we if we use value of depletion width w then we can write cj as
epsilon s a by w so this is the junction or transition resistance for a pn junction and this is this equation is similar to the equation for capacitance in parallel plate capacitor so this is all about transition capacitance so now let's see the diffusion capacitance In this equation, we can see that as we increase the depletion width, capacitance is going to decrease. And if we increase the cross-sectional area A, then capacitance is, is going to increase. It's very important. So when forward bias is applied electrons in the n region will move into the P region and recombine with holes. In a similar way, Holes in the N region, sorry P region, holes in the P region will move into the N region and recombine with electrons as a result the width of the depletion layer decreases here important point is to note that a large number of charge carriers which try to move into the another region will be accumulated
near the depletion region before they recombine with the majority carriers meaning is that when we this is depletion region this is p side and this is n side when we applied a forward bias to this p junction then these electrons which are majority carriers in n side will try to move in the p region and here they will become as minority carriers in a similar way holes from this region to will move to this region so here holes are in majority but here they are acting as minority carriers so the electrons that are moving to this p side will recombine to the holes in p side and this holes that are going to the n side now going to recombine with these electrons but before recombining with majority carriers they will accumulate near this depletion region so in this way we can see that there are lots of lots of negative charge and there are lots of positive charges and due to this separation of opposite charges we can get a diffusion capacitance so as a result a large amount of charge is stored at both ends or both sides of the depletion region and the amount of this charge is very high as we if we compare it to the charge accumulated when we applied reverse bias voltage so this accumulation or accumulation of holes in the n region and electrons in p region is separated by a very thin depletion layer and we know that this layer 
acts like a dielectric or insulating material of a capacitor and charge stored at both sides of the depletion layer x like conducting plates of the capacitor so in this way we can get a capacitor in forward bias condition and if we use a symbol cd for junction for diffusion capacitance then we know that cd will be equal to dq by dv and we can multiply and divide this equation by mu here mu is the minority carrier lifetime so we know that dq by t or mu is the di so here we can write cd as mu di by dv and we know that i by v is r resistance so by using this formula we can write cd which is equal to mu so the v by r is equal to i v by i is equal to r so here we can write mu by r where r is the tv by di which is known as the incremental resistance so here r is the incremental resistance and we can also write r as n vt by i where n depends upon its constant on semiconductor and vt is the 
वोल्ट इक्विलेंट टेम्परेचर सो बाय यूजिंग दिस अजम्सन वी कैन राइट सी डी एज म्यू बाय एन वी टी and for if mu h is the lifetime for holes then we can write this diffusion capacitance as cd p which is equal to mu h n vt and for electrons we can write c dn which is equal to mu n n vt so by combining all these two terms we can write total diffusion diffusion capacitance in a pn junction so here we can see that in a pn junction there are two types of capacitance first is transition capacitance and second one is diffusion capacitance transition capacitance can dominate in reverse bias condition and diffusion capacitance can dominate in forward bias condition so in next lecture we will start metal semiconductor junction